What's up, everybody? This is the Canes Insight Daily Podcast powered by Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Huge news in the transfer portal. Running back Damian Martinez from Oregon State, one of the top 10 backs in the nation, has jumped in the portal, and I can confirm through my sources that Miami has interest in Damian Martinez. We're going to talk about him, the player, potential fits in Miami, and more. Plus, we have a great interview with Kings Connection athlete Marcellus Pulliam, having a great spring, doing a lot of nice things. I did a big interception last year against Boston College. He was an awesome interview. You guys will really enjoy what he has to say uh, as a Kings Connection athlete. First, I want to talk to my friends at Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. They're not jumping in the transfer portal. They're committed to Miami. They're committed to the state of Florida, and they're the absolute best. If you've been in an injured, if you've been injured in an accident, someone you know has been injured in an action, or someone you care about has been injured in an accident. Reach out to Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. They will handle your case from beginning to end and make sure that if you're entitled to significant compensation, you will get significant compensation and they don't get paid until you get paid. Take back control of your life. 1-800-747-FREE. 1-800-747-3733. All right. Big news of the day. Damian Martinez running back from Oregon State. Oregon State's coach left to Michigan State. Oregon State got left out of all this conference shuffling over there in the Pac-10. Makes sense that their best player, their best returning player, junior Damian Martinez, would jump in the transfer portal. And, of course, he made that official yesterday and expect a lot of big teams to come calling. Spoke to my sources in Miami. They can confirm they will have interest in Damian Martinez. I've been saying it on this podcast consistently. Miami is going to have interest in a big-time transfer portal running back if one becomes available. Martinez would qualify. Some stats on the player. As a true freshman, 982 yards, 6.1 yards per carry, seven touchdowns. Last year, 1,185 yards per carry, kept that 6.1 yards per carry, which is excellent, nine touchdowns. This is a part that Mario Cristobal is going to love. Six foot, 232 pounds. So physicality is there just from a size standpoint, and we'll break it down the tape in a second while you watch the highlights. He's from Louisville, Texas, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Not a huge recruit, three-star. Uh, 247 had a good grade on him as a high three-star, but not a heralded recruit, someone who's really elevated his profile with those two outstanding seasons at the college level. Ran 11.37, 100-meter in, in, in high school, which is you know not elite speed, but for a 230-pound back, it, it's pretty good. I mean, he's not uh, totally lumbering back. He has some straight-line speed, but really the physicality. When you watch his highlights, this guy is running people over. He's very decisive. He has very good vision, and he's a tone setter. And I'm a big believer that in college, more so than the pros, a tone-setting physical running back makes a huge difference. You don't believe me? Look at Michigan last year. What did they bring to the table with Blake Corum? He was their most important offensive player, even more so than J.J. McCarthy. Tone-setting running back. You look at Alabama. What did they have for so many years? Georgia. What are they built on? The teams that win big can control the game, particularly late in the game, with dominant physical running. Explosive plays are important, too. Obviously, those teams all have an explosive element to them. Cristobal is trying to recruit that. But you want dominant physicality. And Martinez, 232 pounds. Watch the tape, the physical nature, the way he can run people over. Ran over Mish Powell from Washington, who is now transferred to Miami and is having a great spring for Miami. That presence is very important. And he's not just a plotter. I mean, 6.1 yards per carry. That is a high, high yards per carry. Now, listen, he had a very good offensive line at Oregon State. Right tackle, Taliesi Fuagoa, or Fuaga. Pauly right tackle is going to go to the NFL. Sounds familiar. Miami has that with Francis Malanoa. So that is a, a parallel, that he goes from a very good offensive line with a physical identity to Miami, physical offensive line, some NFL talent there, a physical identity. That would be a fit from that standpoint. Not a huge receiver. I think he had about 137 yards receiving, but can't catch the ball. But really, I think what he brings to the table is a pure running back. You have Chris Johnson. You have guys that can give you that explosive element. You need somebody who can control the game in the fourth quarter, like Michigan did, like Alabama did for so many years, like Georgia has done. That is what Mario is trying to build in Miami, and Damian Martinez would be a perfect fit. We'll see how the interest unfolds over time. He just jumped in the portal. But again, I can confirm that Miami has interest. And Miami has been preparing behind the scenes for the possibility that if a big name back came on the market, 
they'd be ready to pounce. They don't know who's going to jump in because that's not how this thing works, but they can prepare for whoever jumps in that commands a big price tag like Damian Martinez. So, you know, just with, with, with the portal, it really allows you to not just fix holes. It allows you to take your team to the next level. And I think the first few years with Mario Cristobal, he was plugging holes in the portal and there were a lot of holes. It was like one of those cartoons where there's a million, you know, holes in the roof and you're plugging one, another one pops in and you just, you're trying to keep up. That was really the first year. So you're getting guys in the portal that are plugging holes, but they're not impact players. I think the shift you're seeing now is that with the ability to recruit that Mario has high schoolers, you have a lot of impact players and you have whole more holes plugged than you have in the past. So he's trying to add guys who are impact all American type players, Cam Ward, a quarterback, clearly a top five quarterback in the country. Uh, Damian Martinez, at least a top 10 returning back in the country, could potentially be more in his junior year. So I think that's what Mario Cristobal seek to add. That's why I think this makes sense as a potential fit for the Miami Hurricanes. If he if he does come, you may see some uniforms being sold, some Canes jerseys of Damian Martinez, and you'll be able to get those along with everything else at Canes Wear in Davy, I'm going to head there right when I finish recording. Um, they do an amazing job at the store. It is, it is heaven for sports fans uh, at Canes Wear because they got Inner Miami, they got Miami Heat, Miami Marlins, Miami Dolphins, plus all the Canes gear you could want. And it's just a very welcoming environment. Anybody who's been there will rave about the customer service. I'm heading there right when I'm done with this. Um, also, if you're out of state, Caneswear.com will take care of you. You can just deliver pretty much anywhere around from Canes Wear. Great selection. Just check out the website. I get so many comments on the website and on YouTube. People hitting me up on text. They say, D, what is that artwork that's behind you on the show of the Dennis Smith bat signal? That is a painting on canvas by my man Suave. You can get him at Kane City Cartel on Instagram. One word, C-A-N-E, City Cartel on Instagram. Also, open slate apparel. We had the link in the bio. Uh, on and description on YouTube for his Printify shop. You can go and buy it on Canvas. You can get a, just the standard poster, which is less expensive. He's got mugs. He's got all kinds of stuff, different kinds of designs. Support your fellow Canes fans. Suave is the man. You can see him on the, you know, shout out to Maiden Dade, Twitter space. He's all over there. He's all over Twitter. He's a hardcore Canes fan. If you're buying art for the office, for the living room, support a Canes fan. Don't go to Michael's or Bed Bath & Beyond, wherever your wife wants you to go. Talk to my man Suave, Kane City Cartel on Instagram. He'll take care of you. All right, going to shift to Marcellus Pulliam, linebacker from Georgia, signed last year from Sandy Creek. Outstanding, outstanding senior film. I encourage everybody to watch his senior film if you want to get excited about what he brings to the table. Played a little bit, mostly special teams, but he did play on defense in the Boston College game, had a big pick. The team went crazy, making a lot of plays in camp. Told he had a pick six in the scrimmage on Saturday, and it's just generally looked very, very good and active. Uh, he's someone to keep an eye on in the linebacker court. Big guy, can run, tough, fits the image of what Miami's trying to do. And he is, his interview will be brought to you by Kane's Connection, the official NIL collective of Miami. By the way, if you're not signed up, please do. We got some great events coming up with Kane's Connection. Right after the spring game on Saturday, I'll be doing a show uh, at Titanic with Peter Reese. Live, we have some Canes Connection athletes there. Canes Connection members are allowed to attend. It's in a private event. It's going to be amazing. There's going to be food, drink, all kinds of things available. And we'll be doing the show live with Canes Connection athletes, streaming it out. It's going to be a tons of fun. Fifth quarter right after the spring game. Also, tomorrow, Thursday at 8 p.m., I'm doing a live private Zoom for Canes Connection members. We're able to give insider information, more detail on the portal, more detail on spring practice, more detail on recruiting than I'm able to give in this public forum. So check that out. Again, Canes Connection members only. You want to su subscribe. You want to be part of the solution of Miami's official and uh, collective. Sign up at canesconnection.com. Use promo code CIS. You get 20% off your first month. Plus, you get access to all these amazing events when you use promo code CIS. So without further ado, let's kick it to Marcellus Pulliam. All right, Canes fans, joined right now on the Canes Insight podcast by Canes Connection athlete and Miami Hurricanes linebacker Marcellus Pulliam. How you doing today, Marcellus? Appreciate I'm you. Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. Of course, going through spring ball now, spring game coming up here. 
in a week. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, get to know you a little bit off the field as well. But talk to the Canes fans about how spring ball has been going for you and, and your position group as a whole. Man, spring ball has been amazing. You know, we both, uh, all the linebackers making plays. You know, we got some young guys coming in making plays. Uh, Cameron Pruitt, you know, uh, Darius Hayes, you know, and, and older guys who has been here, uh, Wesley Bussaint, uh Chase Smith, Bobby Washington, uh, Popo, my dog, Popo, uh, Raul Aguirre, and uh, me, myself. You know, we we all been putting in the work, you know, and uh, in the spring game, it's all going to show. So I'm, I'm just ready to see us all perform and make plays. And then your position coach, Coach Derek Nicholson, recently got his promotion. Now to Code DC, has Coach changed up on you now that he's got the the special title or what? Mm-hmm. Coach gonna always be the same dude, regardless of what's going on, man. Coach Coach D Nick, that's my guy. He always keep it real with all of us. You know, uh, today he actually uh, shared with us on what he think we need to work on on this last week of spring. So, you know, him just being a great guy and just having a, a great relationship with us, you know, it was it was very easy, you know, to to just understand what, where he was coming from and you know uh, make them changes and uh, perfect them. Them little, um, them little nicks and uh, our play, our play style that we need to. So you know, I'm, I'm happy to have him, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy you got that promotion. It's a very exciting looking room, man. We've had a couple of your teammates on already. We've had Wesley on. Uh, we have Popo on. We've had, uh, we've had had Kiko on as well, right? So you got the vets in there. You young guys coming together, and it, it looks like a very athletic room, man. I mean, talk about some of the speed and, I mean, the hard hitting ability that 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 room possesses. The, the speed is just crazy. Like, um, our, our two little speedsters, uh, Bobby Washington and uh, Cam Pruitt, those guys there can really, like, move. Bobby, when it's all said and done, bro, he really going to be like a low 4-4 four, four guy. You know, he can he can really move. Uh, Cam Pruitt, too. But, uh, you know, just having the vets around, like Kiko and West, man, it, it don't get no better than that. A guy like Kiko, man, who done play all almost all three positions except for Sam. You know, he didn't bounce back from Mike and Will. So just being able to be under um, his wing and just him teach me the ins and outs, you know, really dive into the scheme and us get on the drum board and watch that film. You know, it's amazing. West, West too, you know, I've been watching a lot of film with him. We all have been uh, getting ready for the spring game and, you know, just trying to perfect the little things. So it's, it's great to have them boys around. We always like to ask guys kind of going back to early on in their early football days and early athletic journey, right? Because a lot of you guys played other sports. Were you always football or other sports? I mean, were you, did you play a bunch of stuff or are you just like, I'm I'm playing football? When I first, I didn't, I didn't start playing football. The crazy thing is I didn't start playing football until I was probably like 12. Wow. When I first started my athletic journey, I thought I was a hooper. You know, I used to shoot and just yet. Brian, uh, step back and carry. You know, I used to just, I used, to, I was, I was one of them. So you know, I, at first I thought I was a hooper, but then you know, um, God sent a blessing my way. You know, I'm, I'm happy. And um, when I was at the boys and girls club, it was actually a dude who seen me playing basketball, and then he was like, "Oh, come outside. You know, we play, throw the ball around, play like flag football, something like that." You know, and the crazy thing is, it had to be an angel from heaven because I, I can't even remember the name, but I, I will never forget. What happened? And you know, he just gave me a, he gave me like a little, like a little car, and said, you know, come try out for this football team. I'm, um, I'm volunteering that. You know, I think it'd be good for it. You know, after that, it was, it was, it was up from there. But um, in high school, you know, just to pick up some speed, I did track as well. So, you know, I did, I did basketball, football, track, stuff like that. I got bad news for you, man. You must have been throwing some bricks up if they if, 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 they, if, if that guy told you to come play football. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he seen how big I was. You know, yeah. I was always a little, you know. So he seen he seen how big I was, man. You know, he just he was he told me come out there, so I went out there. So so you got rid of the hoop dreams. You started playing football. Was the physicality there right away? Because we 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 know that's one of the big you know, points of your game is what people talk about. Were you all exactly. were you a hard hitter right right off the bat? I was, you know, it was um growing up, you know, I've never really been scared. Never really been scared of anything. Like I was always the one like I'll fall, get back up. You know, I I didn't I had a bike. I, I bought a, my dad got me a bike on my birthday. I ran into a tree <laughs> trying to race my friend. And you know, it's just I always been a tough dude. So you know the hitting and the physicality, it was just, it was, it was never nothing new to me. You know, it was just something I always had, something I always will have. So I'm blessed for that.
me ask you, Marcellus. I watched your junior film, and you were obviously already good. You were getting offers from big schools. Right. Then your senior video, when that came out, I remember sending it to my friends, posting it on the internet, like, man, you got to watch this because it seemed like you took a major leap from already being very good to you know something really, really, really special. So what happened as far as your improvement from junior year to senior year where the game maybe slowed down for you a little bit? Yeah, so a thing was, a thing that I really had to realize, you know, going into my senior year, you know, not really being highly recruited and really not being recruited at all freshman and sophomore year and then just having that breakout junior year, it was just like when I got that spark and I really knew what I was capable of, it was it was over with from there. So going into my senior year, really, I just had to, I had to become more of a leader and, you know, lead by example and show guys how look that this is how we do it here at Sandy Creek and this we, we don't really do too much of that. But this is this is what we really do here. And you know, just being able to really like watch film with my coach and and dive in and learn like different coverages and know what the D line doing and what the DB's doing and you know um when the guard pull our D tackle gonna pull with them. So you know just really being able to know what's going on and play fast it it really gave me that leap and, you know, just trusting myself and trusting my teammates was really why, um, you know, I, I made that jump and made so many more plays my senior year. What would you say is your favorite thing about the game of football? The favorite, my favorite thing about the game of football is really is the relationships you get and the things you learn and um, the, the trials and tribulations you go through, you know, with your brothers, your coaches. And you know your athletic trainers and uh, you know strength staff, just just everything that really you know the playing part is what everybody is what everybody loves, and that's what everybody talks about. But it's really deeper than that. Like the relationships and the people you meet is it, it's it's unmatchable, man. Like it's it's nothing better you know than than having a team that's really strong, and you can really you know you can call any one of your brothers and answer the phone. So. Really, my favorite thing about it is just, you know, just the relationships you make during it and being able to go out there on them on them Saturdays, you know, and, and make them plays and hear that crowd shaking and, you know, yeah, everything is it's, the whole thing, bro. Just everything about it is amazing, you know, and I'm, I'm blessed to be in this position I'm in and to be able to play this game I love. So, you know, it's great. And we saw that on display when you had that interception against Boston College right at the end of the uh, year. You got mobbed by your teammates. Talk about, I mean, that was pretty much what you're describing right there in in action, right? You know, yeah, just and just being a guy who really had a – who really didn't have a role in the defense last year, being more of a special teams guy, and, you know, just the opportunity that I had and just being able to make that play and just to see how everybody was just, like, so happy for me and how the crowd start shaking, and that, that experience is unmatched. You never. I, I don't think I would never have another feeling like that again, unless we win the the national championship or something like that. But like that that feeling right there, bro. That's that's really what it's all about. And you know, like just just to see older guys like um, Ryan Ragoni, you know, Corey Flag, and 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 just the real vets we had last year. Just to see them guys like truly, truly happy for me. You know, just to see tears coming down their face because I made that play, man. It was it was great, man. And I. I, I wouldn't change nothing for it. Man. I wouldn't change nothing about my season last year. So football's taken obviously a lot of your time, a lot of your passion. Um, but you know, you're more than just a football player. What are some of your your interests off the field? Uh, a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't believe this, bro. But I actually like reading. It's kind of like I don't know. I like I enjoy I enjoy reading books here and there. You know, I mean, I, I play the game a little bit sometimes, but. I'm really, if I'm on the game, bro, I'm playing Madden. And that's really about it. Just trying to learn more about schemes and drops and coverages and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm a I'm a student first, you know. But um, I just love, I love me. Something I say I do in my off time, bro, is just, I don't know, just think about, think about stuff I could do better and stuff to make me a better person. So I say that. As far as reading, what books do you read? So really, um, crazy thing about it, uh, High school, I, I always tried to get in like Harry Potter books and stuff like that, but like I just, I just never really paid too much attention. So now, really, I just I just read anything I can. And what I what I recently been reading is the uh, Stoic. So it's, it's a good book, bro. You know, so it's, it's a great message every day. You know, um, 
you can like go to the day. So you know how today is um today is April fifth. You know, you could go to to like April to today in the book and you know it'd be like a great be a great message in there for you to read. So that's good. I like I like reading that. It's very informational. A little less serious of a question, but I gotta ask the follow up. You talk about Madden. We heard Coach D Nick can really play, but I don't know. You give me this. You already gave this face, so that's either he beat you bad too, or you're gonna say he's a fraud that he can't, that he doesn't have the ability. Talk to me, because I think Popo said Popo said he, you know, this man has a whole family. He hasn't played in forever, and he can't. And he gave me a tough game, so. You know, nah, what's, the, what's the report? I'm going to be honest. That Madden right now ain't too much, you know, me and D. Nick, we ain't too much on good terms right now because he did he did, he did, did give me the business. You know, our, our last meeting at the house, man, you know, he did beat me. But um, that man, bro, it's just like when you know so much about the game, and, and not just Madden, like just football in general, you can have man on this side and cover three on this side, and you will know, like, what – what he's in, like you don't know where to what to do, where to throw the ball, cause he he like baiting you to do stuff, and it's just like, nah, he ain't no fraud though. That man, that man, the truth. Listen, that man the now, truth. now we know why the code defensive coordinator title was was well deserved, right? Because exactly. The second now the second guy, I didn't ask Kiko, but he doesn't strike me as much of a gamer. Anyways, he said he plays golf, so I, I, I guess a, a couple linebackers that he's that he's uh beaten now and probably probably more i would say if 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 two of them have admitted it then you know that there, there's got to be more out there yeah yeah no he the truth he the truth he the truth, the truth. we, we got to talk about uh kane's connection marcellus obviously this interview in partnership with them talk to us a little bit about what they've you know helped you with in, in your in the time that you've had working with them and, and partnering with them Kane's Connection is a uh, is a very great uh, program, you know, and they they're getting me more like like more they're getting me more affiliated with the community and you know just stuff to stuff to just help help people, you know. We we do a lot of we do a lot of events for um people and you know it's it's fun being around meeting different people and and just. Just different ways you can help people. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of things you can do to help people. To people other than giving money. You know, just giving somebody your time and you know giving a a kid a good a good word and just talking to him and shaking his hand. You know, taking pictures, all stuff like that. Like, but like I, I really didn't notice, but just little things make people's day. You know, and just to see other people smiling and happy that they got to shake a shake a UN player's hand or take a picture with the UN players is great. And Kane Connection really brings that. You know, they they help us really get connected with the community and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm I'm happy to be a part of that. And, you know, if you're not with Kane's Connections, you should get with them. It's very good. Very great. Hey, the man said it himself. So you guys heard it right there. Go to canesconnection.com, sign yes, up for a membership. Um and yeah, man, I think that, that pretty much does it, man. Great talking to you this afternoon. Great getting to know you a little bit. And Canes fans, like I said, everyone's excited about that linebacker room. But you bring that – you bring some of that old-school Kane mentality. That's what the fans – kind of the vibes they're getting from it. So keep up the good work. And hey, sir. Thank you once again for joining the show. Hey, thank you for having me, man. You guys have a blessed day.